Welcome back to Anikapedia with me, Anika. As the coronavirus pandemic spread across the globe, the term virus gets a lot of airplay. But what exactly are viruses and how do they spread? You will learn all about that in today's video. What is a virus? Viruses are the smallest of all the microbes. They are said to be so small that 500 million Riho viruses, which cause a common cold, could fit onto the head of a pin. That's pretty small. They are unique because they are only alive and able to multiply inside the cells of other living things because they can't capture or store energy themselves. The cell they multiply is called the host cell. Viruses are microscopic parasites, generally much smaller than bacteria. They lack the capacity to thrive and reproduce outside of a host body. Predominantly, viruses have a reputation of being the cause of contagion. Widespread events of disease and death have no doubt bolstered such a reputation. In general, a virus is made up of a core of genetic material, either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protective coat called capsid, which is made up of protein. DNA is like an encyclopedia of all genetic information for a cell. It contains everything there is to know about a person. RNA is like a photocopy of a single topic. Sometimes the capsid is surrounded by an additional spiky coat called the envelope. Viruses are capable of latching on to host cells and getting inside them. Coronaviruses in specific are a group of related RNA viruses that can cause diseases in mammals and birds. On the outside of a coronavirus, there is a thing called spike protein. This spike protein helps enter our cells. There's also RNA, which is a genetic material, helping in creating numerous copies of itself, like a photocopy machine that just never stops copying papers. How does the COVID virus enter our body? This virus is only and only capable of entering the lungs. For a virus to spread, it must first find its way into a cell. Penetrating the cell's surface isn't an easy thing. Cell's outer membranes are normally tough to penetrate without some kind of special pass. But viruses have ways of tricking the cells into letting them in. Hmm. The virus cannot enter the cell membrane as the cell membrane only lets certain substances enter. The things that are needed to enter go through cell receptors known as ACE2 receptors. The virus spike protein gets attached to the receptors and gets inside. Therefore, the virus is able to enter our cells. Oh no, what's gonna happen next? The cell only enters the lungs because the tissues and the cells of the lungs are sensitive. What a bummer. When the virus enters the cells, it goes to a part of the cell called the nucleus. So the virus goes to the nucleus and basically asks, where is that photocopy machine where you can make duplicates of things? And the poor nucleus thinks that he is a good guy, which he is definitely not, and shows him where the photocopy machine is. <sighs> Hold up, where is this photocopy machine? Well, the part of your cells that is sort of like a photocopy machine is called the ribosome. The ribosome helps in copying protein 
their fall, your body always and always has protein. Nice, right? Well, there is one flaw, that whatever thing the paper is put onto this photocopy machine, it keeps copying it uncontrollably. So it's not like the cell membrane, where it can only allow certain things to enter. When the virus reaches the ribosome, it throws the protein paper away and gives its genetic material to it. And the ribosome starts making hundreds of duplicates of it. So it's not just the coronavirus that makes you sick. It's also your body that's making you sick. Wow. Because the virus tricks your body to make duplicates of it, then many coronaviruses get inside the lungs. How does your immune system's defense mechanism respond to the virus? In a successful response to the coronavirus infection, the immune system manufactures specialized proteins, Y-shaped proteins called antibodies, that attach onto the virus's spike protein so that the virus will not be able to enter our cells because the spike protein is the one that helps getting into our cells. Woohoo! The first immune response is very rapid. You have immune cells that sense the virus is a strange agent, and they start making a lot of things called cytokines to stop the virus. Some of these cytokines kill cells in order to keep the virus from replicating. A lot of viruses die at high temperatures, so your body gives you a fever. Oh, not a fever. The first response is called innate immunity. If you think of it like an army, it's pretty much your first line of defense that comes to play immediately or within hours of the antigen's appearance in the body. If the virus is still able to survive that, the first line has previously coordinated with the second line of defense. Behold, the adaptive immunity. The adaptive immunity is more specific response to this particular invader to try and clear it. B cells generate antibodies and T cells help the B cells make antibodies and can kill the viruses themselves. You can consider the T cells are like the soldiers who search out and destroy the targeted invaders. And if everything goes well, you will kill the virus and develop some immunity to it. Yay! As you get older, both the innate and adaptive immune cells are not as efficient at mounting a response to an infection. It takes longer to make more cytokines, and by that time, the pathogen may have already invaded other cells. Ugh. At the same time, the innate and immune cells don't communicate as well with the adaptive immune cells to mount that second line of defense. This is why they see more of a severe impact to the virus. Now we know more about this deadly coronavirus, we should try and take as many precautions possible. In my next video, I'll be talking about the different kinds of corona vaccines and how they work. Till next time, goodbye!